Hey there, this is your orchestration tutor, Thomas Goss, taking just a few minutes today for the pre-launch of my new book, 100 More Orchestration Tips. This book is more than just a sequel to 100 Orchestration Tips. Many of the tips are quite a bit longer than in the first book, going into more detail about the insights of professional concert musicians, their special knowledge and day-to-day -day realities, and essential information about the workings of their instruments that doesn't make it into orchestration manuals. Some tips might just make you a little more informed, a little more at home in your scoring of certain instruments. Other tips might just save you raised hands at rehearsal, which can slow everything down and waste precious time. I've been working on this book for about three years, but I have to admit that most of the writing is happening right now in these final months before the launch. As the work has progressed, I've been releasing some choice tips as free previews. Here are some of my favorites from each section of the orchestra, which you can link to in the information under this video. From the wind section, a tip about how to score octaves within families of instruments. What range in which two of the same instrument will balance in octaves, like two flutes? And what registers will work best together between a standard instrument and its auxiliary model, like oboe and English horn? From the brass section, a tip about horn section teamwork, showing how the horns work in paired partners, how often the most delicate work of intonation is performed by the first and second horn, and how the third and fourth horn can work together in support of them, along with other practical combinations. From the percussion section, a tip about timpani range qualities, in which I explore how the composer can assign certain tuning schemes to the kettles for a more stressed emotional effect in higher positions, or a more ominous character in lower tunings, or even how these tunings can be mixed for different effects. I already released an excerpt from my harp tips as a video a couple of years ago about how changing one or two notes to enharmonic equivalents can lighten the quality of a glissando. In addition to this, I just released another tip about how bispigliando is an effect that simply cannot be played loudly on the harp, no matter how much you might want it otherwise. And last, from the string section, I'm delighted to share a tip that I just uploaded to the Orchestration Online website this morning. The harmonic spectrum of muted strings. I've diagrammed comparisons of the differences in harmonic spectra between the normal tones and muted tones of several instruments for this book. The results really show you which part of the instrument's resonance is being dampened, which parts are nearly the same, and how that gives the muted sound its character. Hey, I've really got to get back to writing this book, but go ahead and have a look at some of those tips. If you want to reserve an advanced copy of the book, you can do that for a 20% pre-launch discount over at the website. I'll release more information soon about the launch party on March 10th at the Los Angeles College of Music. Thanks to everyone who's been reading my tips and using my online resources over the past decade. This book is for you.